Hey there, film fans. I'm Jeff. I'm Dave. And I'm John. And welcome back to The Love of Cinema, a pod in which we'll challenge one another to discuss movies, both new and old, with a strictly positive critical eye. That's right. And to keep us positive, people, to keep us positive, we've decided to make Fucking this positive. a little bit of a drinking game. A little bit, yeah. So anytime we say anything negative at all. Or stupid. Or stupid. And to make sure the Sisu marketing team doesn't lose any sleep, we're going to go ahead and keep ourselves honest by playing this sound. Which means Ooh. that we need to take a drink. And we actually hope you at home drink along with us. All right. So, pour yourselves a glass while we talk about a movie that's basically the story of one man trying to find an open ATM in Manhattan after 10 p.m. set against the background of World War II. <laughs> Jesus God. Christ. God. Fucking cheers. God have, you, have you tried to find an ATM lately? Oh, my fucking God. Dave, they, shut, ta- they, they shut them down. <sighs> is that like your takeaway from this movie? They no, can't... Not, not at all. They, they, they no, shut them, they shut them down so people can't sleep in them. The bodega, no, the bodega cats have taken control of them all. <laughs> we already did a cheers with him, so people who are listening don't, oh, yes. don't understand. But but yeah, well, let's just get let's just get right into the introduction of our of our guest who's with us today. In case you missed all the lovely social media, who put together that Instagram story? Who was that, you guys? Jeff that, or Dave? That was Jeff. I respectfully the, abstain the, from the, answering the, that question. Oh come on, so sweet, so <laughs> cute, ladies and it. gentlemen. Uh, we have a guest here. Welcome to the podcast, the actor from Sisu, from many other things we're going to talk about as well, Mister Jack. Doolin, welcome Ow! to the show, dude. Me, gentlemen. Oh man, this is fun. Yeah. Um, it's the, it's yeah. the, so this may... is actually the first time we've had an actor from the movie we're talking about on the show. Am, am yeah. I the first time you've ever had a guest, or is it always just been you three? No, no, we, we, we we've have had guests, guests um, but they usually we have guests yeah. sometimes for sure, yeah. Okay, um, cool. But we have not had one, a guest who is who is literally on in the project that we're discussing that week. Right. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is new ground for us. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. Listeners at home, uh, you may recognize Jack Doolin. Uh, if you go see this, so you may recognize his face from a uh, project such as Cemetery Junction, the Ricky Gervais feature from uh, 2010. Uh, who was in that? A little known actor named Felicity... Jones. Jones, is that yep. right? Yeah, maybe you've heard of her. Uh, mm-hmm. If you didn't see that, maybe you saw the uh, eventually got bought by Netflix the great detect female de- uh, led detective story Marcella. A few seasons on that. He was in the first two, I believe. First two. He also played one of the TNT twins <laughs> on Fuck. last season yes. of The Boys, season three. He hosted the orgy. In case you don't know who the TNT twins are, that was him uh, and many many other things. It would have been a weird couple of Too weeks, that fun. one. It was a weird couple of weeks. Too much fucking fun, dude. And Jack, tell us very quickly how you how you got your start. What was like? What was the first big project you were on for people who don't know how you kind of broke in? Um, well, I, I went to quite a famous children's theatre in, in Islington in London. Um, turned out a lot of people. Like Daniel Kaluuya was in my class. Um, so I started you really young. I think I did my first guest spot on a TV show when I was about seven or eight. Um, and then as a teenager, I was in a spin-off of a famous sitcom in England. And I was in that for about four years. So that, that there was... There you go. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, that was my first like, regular job. That's awesome. Regular Dave, job. Dave, here's a little... Mm. Dave, here's a little... I don't think I showed this to you guys, but I wanted to call this out and let Jack speak to it just for a second. Jack was in a short called The Fly in 2015, and it went to a bunch of festivals. Uh, and one, one of them, Roger Deakins either saw it or was on like a judging panel. He was, he was on the panel. Yeah, and he ended up saying some really nice things. Wait, about who saw it? it? And I just. My headphones no, ripped off. He is no, on our. <laughs> Dave's head just ripped off. My headphone ripped Roger, off. Wait, Roger you... Deakins. Oh, never heard of him. I thought you were kidding. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> He's on our Mount Rushmore oh, of the fun. show, yeah. right next to Mark Rylance. Come on. And Richard Kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Jack, welcome to the show. We're going to talk more about it. Uh, let me just shout out really quickly. We have a beer sponsor. His name is Carlos motherfucking Barozzo. Right. You can find That's that guy's handle on Instagram. That's exactly right. <laughs> C-Barozzo.beer. That's the handle on Instagram. C-B-A-C-B-O-A-R-R-O-Z-O dot Jesus. beer. <laughs> 
How many times have I said that? And we have some music on this episode and some music on every other fucking episode. And it is all provided by the artist Dasein. That's Dasein, D-A-S-E-I-N. You can find uh, links in the show notes, follow all, uh, all the music. It's on all the usual music platforms. Go to Spotify, Apple Music, download. Enjoy. All right, Jeff. What's up? Fucking set us up, dude. What, what are we talking about? We're talking about Sisu. I should also say... Um, so Dave, so Jack actually took Dave and I out for drinks a couple months ago. We got pissed, as they like to say abroad. You were filming an episode of TV show here. Pissed, and we got hammered. Apart from <laughs> apart from Jack making fun of my uh, my. <laughs> Uh, it's just too cute we didn't finish our beer that's how i mean come on we like committed the cardinal sin we went to a bar we were like nope (laughs) we just got anyway jack paid for it all so thank you again jack i really appreciate that i want to say that we owe you one but i don't actually feel that way but thank you i like (laughs) jesus but we had fun and hopefully we'll be back in the city soon. Okay, we're talking about Sisu, people. Sisu, this is directed by Jamari Helander, who has taken on such topics in the past as unearthing Santa Claus, who has frozen underground. <laughs> and um, his... Yeah, which one was that? That one was called... Um... Rare Exports. That was Rare Exports. Yeah, Rare Exports. Oh, my God. And he's also taken on an Air Force One crash with the President of the United States. And now here he is killing Nazis. I mean... What an unbelievable you know director, what? You get, the finished You get it right in the end. <laughs> and I've said before, no wow. more Nazi movies, I, and I, like I take it the, it the fuck back after this movie. <laughs> so this yeah. is um, this is this just came out in the U.S. It, it is get, it's still opening up. It's not in a ton of theaters yet, so hopefully the word of mouth will help spread. So make sure a that thousand and six screens as of today. Nice. In the United States. In the United States. I'm going yeah, to say the rain here in New York fucks everybody up. People don't go to the movies when it rains. In the in the suburbs, maybe they need to get out of the house. In the city, they don't go to the movie theaters when it rains. It. It's just the truth. I got a, I got a quick beef as well with uh, AMC Times Square. Do you want to make a gripe um, out of it or what? I mean, if you want, uh, basically Set I'll that just fire this off. Let's go. All right. um, I, I looked up the times for this to go and see it, and Lincoln Center had a full day of screens in Dolby. And Times Square That's didn't right. start showing this fucking movie till 5.30 p.m. I'm like, what not the hell, sure. man? Like, what, yeah. Not a lot what of 10 a.m. Nazi yeah, killing what, what, going what on? Is in, what is in your Dolby Cinema the rest of the... Okay, it's, it's Super Mario Brothers, but like... Yeah, it's just fucking com- kids, just get out of there. Yeah, like it's it's made a billion dollars. Let it make it go away. Jack, you have kids. Have you seen the Super <laughs> Mario Brother movie? I have not. I have not. How do you? Um, <laughs> no, mine you going to? won't sit still. One of mine would. The little one, there's no way she would sit still for a whole movie yet, so... Okay. I've got about another right. That's all right. Spring for spring for Dolby Cinema. They got big aisles. One the that yeah. one can just run up and down. It's true. <laughs> um, so we're going to be talking about Sisu, of course, um, and you know, basically, kind of interviewing Jack along the way. I guess that's our format for today. This is new for us, first time. Hope you guys appreciate it. We have a couple questions from the Instagram. Um, I think we're going to like them soon. We'll get there when we get there. Should we skip the gripes and get right into it? You guys yeah, let's wanna... get into it. I snuck in one, but let's let's just get into and it. I guess. Yeah. I guess... I guess I should just go ahead and put it out there and say to anyone who doesn't know this, Jack is my brother-in-law, so this isn't just a hot grab. It's still we a good guy. We weren't cool enough to go call the Sisu marketing team and get, get you know one of their best and brightest. No, we here. actually tried very him. hard to not call the Sisu marketing team. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, there's get, no way he'd be here. Is, is, is Jal Mori available? Jack, how do you actually say his name? Is that right? Jal Mori. Jal Mori. Jal Mori. Jal Mori. Yeah. There you go. I'm glad. See, I knew he I'm was going to be here so he could well, at least... I that, right? Otherwise, I'll be upset him as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that's fucking funny. All right, we're going to ask um, you. A, we're going to ask you a million questions. I'm going to read the okay. IMDb description, and then we're going to get into it. This is a Finnish film. If you check IMDb, it says it came out in 2022, but it to us in America, this basically just came out this weekend, April 28th, Friday. Uh, a date I know pretty well. And um, Jack, we're going to talk to you a little bit more about its premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival in 2022. Toronto is a city mm-hmm. where Jack spent a little bit of time filming the boys. So um, can't get out of ki- You never come to New York except for that one week where, you know, we had to get as drunk as possible. But Toronto, you decide <laughs> to spend your entire life. What joy. Yeah, I was so- in New York working, all right? Let's- <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> we went out and got drunk one night. I was The rest of the time I was working. You're right. What yeah, happens? you're right. You're very well. Well, two nights. 
What happens? Yeah, yeah. What happens when, when a proper Jack. Australian? Too nice, Jack. <laughs> when, a, when a proper Australian and a proper Englishman get together, is there, is there a drink off? Is it? Are you? Were you? Was there a competition? Like, like the to bartender tell you, has no we, idea what they're talking don't about. Remember? <laughs> we don't know. But maybe there was to begin with, and then it just evolved into. Yeah, yeah, the, the beer God. just got warmer and warmer, so he got happier and happier. I actually don't remember. I only remember two, I only remember two things. We're going to talk about Cecil. I only remember Ew. two things. Number one, you don't like Apple Watches. Oh, sorry, we should we should cut that out. Uh, number two, um, you grew up near Adele. And number three, I know I said two things. Number three. I'm going to go um, out on a limb and say there was no Apple product placement in this film. Number three, um, you admit that that. British actors have way better accents than American actors. <laughs> That's true. Those are the three things I remember. Everything else, a little bit of a blur. What a night. I'm going to read Jeff, this. You just, cut, you just cut his future Apple uh, endorsement just... contract off at the shins, no, bro. I, I'm, also a bit of, chance, I'm also a bit of a right mind reader because I can tell right now two, at least two of us on the show are thinking, can we just talk about the fucking movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, <laughs> you are there to represent the people. I appreciate that. So Sisu, according to the IMDb description, is about... When an ex-soldier who discovers gold in the Lapland wilderness tries to take the loot into the city, Nazi soldiers led by a brutal SS officer, and I'll add his first mate, battle him. This Was that yeah. description written in Finnish and translated by <laughs> Google Translate? <laughs> it might be ChatGPT no, wrote this. I don't know. I felt like they this kind of went. Exactly, this is what you're getting, and there's no is, yeah, yeah. And that'll be. I'm. I feel like I'll, that. I feel like that essential comment on this movie from the this description. I think that's going to be the biggest thing we're going to end up talking about is how how shamelessly it is what it is. And that's where like the secret sauce of this movie, I think, you know, mm. really lives. But let's go around the horn. Let's make Jack feel uncomfortable while we either yeah. uh, say really nice things or, or not so nice <laughs> things about what we thought of this movie. Dave, yeah. what'd you think of this movie, dude? I thought it was great. I had a lot of fun. Everyone in my theater, again, had a lot of fun with this um, because I'll, one, one thing I'll say is, holy fuck, they don't hold back on the violence. You, you don't like you don't you know it's even it, i this, saw like, one critic say they didn't and that critic i want to i'm so fucking mad at that one i hate it so much they're like went easy on it i was like i saw a leg bleeding as it flew across the screen what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> anyway sorry go back to you dave um no i really i really dug that it was like in chapters and there was almost no dialogue for a fair portion of it um that kind of was perfect it built the mythology around him up i thought i thought it was really well structured all, all, in, all in all, I had fun. This was a good movie. Yeah, nice. I, uh, I do, I do like the titles. They did, they did like six chapters. I think chapters, it was. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and the titles just got more and more destroyed as as it went on. It was almost like the physical condition of the lead actor. It just sort of degraded. <laughs> and uh, it, it kind of funny thing. It felt to me like because I think I believe he said he was. It was inspired by, um, like First Blood and that sort of thing. Um, I felt more like it was inspired by a samurai film. Like it, it had a real samurai mm. film to it, uh, like film into it, and it, it almost, almost also, like it also felt like those shorts they used to put on, like the Rocketeer and stuff before movies back in the day. Like you could break this up into five chapters and watch it once a, one a week. Mm-hmm. Jack, what were you saying? Uh, I think Yamari told me it was more like westerns rather than samurai uh-huh. that were a big influence on it. Yeah, I, I saw like, a Japanese western I mean, once. Um, and it was a it was a Western fusion samurai sort of thing, and that that really reminded me of this. The Magnificent Seven. Sorry, never. It was it was Tarantino kind of a Japanese too, version. Yeah. Fucking oh. Tarantino reminded me of that. Inglorious. Um, of yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll keep going off of that. I feel like it was. Uh, everybody had a blast in my theater. Like everyone really enjoyed watching this movie. We really enjoyed watching this movie. Um, so I'm excited to kind of break it down more. But I think my. I think my favorite thing about this movie that I really don't know if it's getting if it's being seen this way in the marketing because right now they just want to get butts in the seats so that people yeah. can enjoy themselves. But when you watch it, you can really tell. And of course, I have a, a little you know little anecdotal information just mm-hmm. hearing about when Jack's experience just personally. But this is a mm-hmm. shamelessly small independent film that is breaking through and getting international attention right now. And I yeah. don't know if people realize that who are just in middle America or somewhere around the world. You can <clears> tell <throat> the way it's shot that this was independent. 
you can tell they didn't have weeks and weeks of coverage. They had, they had, a, you know, a lot of times it felt like they had their single camera. They had their chance at getting what, it, whether it was a big explosion or a big emotional moment. They edited it as such. It feels like an independent film that is elevated into this crazy, amazing genre. And that's, I think that's one of the most attractive things about it is that it does take on a lot of times I feel like independent films, especially in, in this space of like budget wise, are, they end up being a little bit more like character driven dramas. This is genre, right? And it's not horror either. It's dealing with these Western themes. It's dealing with uh, ch ch chapter breakdown structure and it's dealing with a, a period, which is difficult. This is a period piece. And I just think it's uh, that's something that I just filmmaking wise that I walked away thinking a lot about. Not only did I have fun, and I think anyone can sit down and have fun, but if you're interested in movies at all and how things are made, mm. this was a small film that is so successful approaching each of those elements that it got bought by fucking Lionsgate in a bidding war after the Toronto Film Festival at the biggest North American market, and it's now hitting the theaters. And a lot of people don't know the difference between this. And fucking, you know, Guardians that's coming out next week or whatever. You know, that's that's so that's so exciting to me. I think that's what's so cool about this. Well, I think the difference is they were actually out there, not green screened. They were fucking out there. Yeah. <laughs> I can't work. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were, we're gonna definitely dive into that. Jeff, let's ask you first, and then I want to hear Jack. Let's ask him a few questions about how it was to actually make it because Oh yeah, I feel like this is it's so cool that he actually got to go there and do that and be out there in that location. It's fucking gorgeous. I'm sure it was an intense experience. Jeff. Yeah, I mean, well, first things first, the location is it. I actually, one of my first questions that I asked myself to remember to ask Jack, which we can ask after this is, what a weird way to phrase that. Yeah. <laughs> to keep going. <laughs> Basically, the way it opens, I mean, yeah, again, the Western, there's a million comps that you could give, but it, it just, you see like this open landscape vista that's so obviously not in America. I know we're watching this in America and people are watching it all over the world, but I think it is good. You know, we do get a lot of people who are, you know, English speaking, so here and then Britain listening. We don't get this story. I didn't know, I didn't even know the Nazis were in yes. fucking Finland. I, I had yeah, no idea. I literally was like, wait, what's, can I see a map? Well, you assumed, right? Hold on. You assumed, right? You were, it wasn't like <laughs> no. the first time. <laughs> no. Why would I assume that? Okay. <laughs> I know that there was a war between one country and the rest of the world and it was close, but I didn't think that it got every, I didn't think it was everywhere. I mean, I knew that it was in a lot of places, but I didn't know. I didn't think about this. Um, so it, right off the bat, I'm already curious. And it's basically yeah. a person with, I, I didn't know anything about this, but I just saw the location and the landscape. It's my favorite thing in the world. It's hard for me to watch TV shows because it looks like the actors can't even touch the set. It looks like they can't pick that pen up without some, like somebody yelling at them. Whereas here we are, Ooh, we're literally in nature with a real horse. And I, I'm just, I'm sitting there going, where does the camera crew sleep? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I just, I, I just immediately was sucked into it. I love the chapter idea. It was so self-aware, it's short. And I'm sure you filmed more than an hour and a half, although I don't know anything, but I, I feel like they cut it down. Sometimes you could leave things on the table. So maybe even you, Jack, are a little bummed that some things didn't make it in. But on the whole, for like a comedy like this, I think it's so well paced and and it's just it's exactly right. It's just exa it's just exactly right. The people behind me were were shouting out in Spanish and I didn't understand it, but I knew exactly what they were talking about. Everybody was in agreement on this film. We're so happy we saw it together in Dolby with the, with the sound. The sound oh is amazing. Yeah. The music is amazing. It looks that stunning. Score and it's awesome. The throat singing. Yeah. And it plays oh my god, yeah. And it plays out like a novel on screen. It's it's stunning. You know, it's like it's I love that you like don't speak for like a half an hour. Yeah, like a novella. I'd love it. It's yeah, fun. gush me. The Motherfucker, script, gush me. That's for all three of them. <laughs> the script reads like a novella. Beautiful. Nice. Mm. So, yeah, let's. I, I, I mean, Jeff, all three of us enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, f just to fucking call us out here, we're not just doing this because we know Jack and we're excited he's on the movie. We're not just cheerleading. It is. It is fun. It is really yeah. good. You're yeah. going to enjoy yourself. Good reviews, high if audience like score. Kind of movie, go watch it. Certified fresh. Um, and come on. But Jack, we just like just 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 hit us with a little bit of because again, I know you've kind of told me these things, but I think it's always fun when people get a little bit of the inside scoop. What did you think you were going into when you said yes, and when you went to Finland, and your wife was pregnant, and your and you know, just tell us like, did wow. you know it was going to be this movie? You know, when you decided to take this independent film job somewhere in Europe in the fucking freezing, you know, just talk a little bit about it. Was it was freezing. You were shirtless. <laughs> yeah, it was my, <clears throat> that day was minus 25. 
What? Holy shit. Because <laughs> oh we're in uh, America, Celsius or Fahrenheit? <laughs> uh, in Celsius. Yeah, that's hurt. that hurts. So I don't know what I don't know what but I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. But... Yeah, that's minus some fucking Vim infinity. Hop, some Vim yeah. Hof shit on this movie. <laughs> and that was my first day filming as well. We shot, we shot largely chronologically, um, oh, nice. which is obviously rare, but makes so much sense for that story and that movie. <clears throat> um, when I signed on, I was in Toronto, and it was, it was. I can do that in Fahrenheit. I can do hot in Fahrenheit. <laughs> it was like 96 and I was in a full body leather super suit <laughs> doing an action sequence with like explosions. I've never been hotter in my life. <laughs> like, but you know, it's the boys and there was big budgets. So, and like, we had a mist intent where you could go and cool down. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then, yeah. And then I, I went back to London for a few weeks and then was in Finland shirtless minus 25 and like the juxtaposition to go from yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of going fucking misting ten on this thing, <laughs> you know, to a six million euro movie in the wilderness in Finland. But, uh, did I know what I was signing up for? No, because I didn't realise how funny it was until I saw it. it did you really... know the director? No, no. I had a friend of mine suge- suggested me to Yelmery. Um that's and awesome. then I sent an audition and a self tape. Um, and then I got on the phone with Mike Goodridge, who is the British exec producer for a company called Good Chaos. Um, Mike's a great producer, he's got incredible taste. Um, and me and Yamri got on the phone and really got on. And then I was off to, off to that man. So, so at what point when you were filming or, and I, you know, I think you can say this if, if you feel comfortable, like, did you feel like you were in good hands? Like the whole time when the shoot was going on, were you like, this is going to be something you, you probably didn't expect this kind of incredible breakout success, but did you, did you feel like I made the right choice? This is an independent film that is being helmed by somebody who knows what they're doing. Cause sometimes you say yes to any films, but you're making an independent film and you're kind of just like, I hope everybody is having a good time because there's no guarantees here about what's going to happen with these projects. Um, I guess the answer to that is like two-pronged. When I turned up and like, it's where we were was so remote. Like so, it, it's the, literally the edge of the earth. Like, so I had to fly from London <clears throat> to Helsinki. Then I got on another plane, which flew somewhere else. And these planes, like they're like buses. They like land. Some people get off, some more people get on. It's like being on the fucking subway, but you flying up. Anyway, so this plane stopped about three times and we were, I was still like 700 miles from where I needed to go. And we did practice <laughs> by coach. Um, and me and Axel did that journey together. We sort of gave us a bit of time because it took us like two days to get there. So we had a bit of time to like bond and sort of form our dynamic. Um, but then when this is we, the actor who plays the head Nazi. Yeah, the actor who plays right, the, the, yeah, the main officer. Okay. Your, yeah. yeah, Axel, who's he's awesome. Like, he's Brad Pitt level famous in Norway. It's crazy. <laughs> we rented a car one weekend and drove to Norway because we just needed something to do. And uh, and dude, we sat down at a restaurant within five minutes, and we're still in the middle of nowhere. And within five minutes, there was a queue of like twenty people for selfies with him. I was like, oh god, that's fun, like, dude! That's so you cool. are like super famous here. Yeah, <laughs> you're, um, sitting, you're sitting there like I hope that never happens to me. Shit. He, he's also been in the <laughs> yeah. Marshall, the Martian, and some big movies, but he's rec- he's like that that guy. I recognize his face, but he, he, awesome. he did a movie called Max Manus, um, where he played a really famous Norwegian freedom fighter, low resistance fighter. Nice. nice. Apparently, it's a real. I haven't seen it, um, but apparently, it's a really, really good movie. Um, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Dwayne nice. Johnson's Hercules. Yeah, he could be Mads Ma- Mads Mikkelsen in a minute if you you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there were there were times where there was a striking resemblance. Yeah. Um, so you went up there. And- so uh, you know, and like the conditions are so harsh that you're just trying to survive and like get through the day. So I, I do think a little bit of my like maybe my industry brain of like was this the right decision? Is this going to be good? I think that all melted away. It's just so hardcore. 
that you're just trying to get through it. And like, I, I don't like to look at the monitor. I don't like watching playback and stuff like that. I never have done. Um, but I would go and look at some of the stuff I wasn't in. And like when I was, when I saw how Kiel was shooting, like some of the shots of the vistas yeah. and the that sky and the landscape, and you're like, this this adds like two zeros onto the budget in in terms of production value. Yeah, every now and then yeah. you get a cinematographer yeah. that just looks like they can control the sun and uh, the environment, and yeah. it's yeah, it's yes. it's gold. James, pronounce his name, Kiel Lagrus. Yes. Yeah, Kiel Lagrus. Yeah, Lagros. Yeah, they shot the shit out of it. Didn't you tell me that these guys worked together on some commercials, and they kind of cut their teeth like getting how how do we make it look as fucking sexy as possible on limited budgets, and then bring those skills into independent feature making? Hmm. I think so. I mean, Yamuri not so much because Yamuri obviously had rare exports, but then like Big Game was I don't know what the budget was, but it was a lot higher than C two. Um, like a legit Norwegian. Well, I think it was. I think it was a studio. I think it was. I might was be, it really? I don't know enough about it, but I think it was like a studio. He's the president of the United States, so what yeah. <laughs> in that plot? So, yeah. Samuel Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, to anybody who's seen this movie, you you play a villainous character, and they, they do something really interesting with you, where you're you're very obviously a number two in in essence. That most of what you do is take orders, even when you not to get too spoiler, but even when you kind of know you're sort of making the the choice that is not from command down necessarily, but your job is to be the number two. But they introduce you in a very challenging right. way, of I'm course. Gonna, I'm going to turn the spoiler alert on just for anyone watching on YouTube, yeah. But it's, so you, but I'm, I'm circling back to, you didn't know this movie was a comedy, but you certainly knew you were a villainous character. So I'm curious, did you find this level of villain? I mean, there's nothing more obvious in the world than the Nazis were wrong. They're the villains <laughs> in history, right? And you are playing a Nazi and you now are not only a number two because you have agency in this decision of how we find you that is bad and it's wrong and that was your choice so that you can't you can't just say you were following orders. What is it like entering set? And that's how we, we meet you in the movie. What is it like taking on a character with that? It's pretty heavy. Um, I mean, the first time I stepped in the costume truck, and put the jacket on with the lightning bolts on the collar. The, the gravity of it, that's when it was like, oh, I'm playing a really, really nasty dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's heavy, but it, there's so, like, so many actors love playing bad guys, mm. don't they? And there's, there's a reason for that. Yeah. Because it gives you a, it gives you a freedom to make choices that, that kind of normal members of society don't make. It's, it's choices that you would never make in your own personal life. So there's a there's a real freedom that comes with being able to do that and, and act that out. I don't know what that says about me, but... Um, no, I don't know. Yeah, now I get that. And what was it like... Um, <sighs> Not to be not to be too ass kissy here, but you and Axel. So if anyone who hasn't seen this movie yet, obviously go see it. Turn the we're in spoiler alerts, but anyone who's watched it, I think you're gonna know what I mean when I say there's a lot of mise en scène, which is not dialogue driven, it's just behavior driven, silent movie kind of driven storytelling, where it's not a really dialogue heavy script. Um, for sure for our protagonists, but even for these antagonists, Jack and Axel, who play the the, the head Nazis. A lot of it is just behavior. Um, both of you were just relaxed as fuck in terms of the work, the acting. Like, it, it just seems so. Was it, did he and you, did you guys feel like you were on the same page in terms of like behavior and everything? And and sometimes you're only as good as your scene partner kind of thing. And you guys were in a lot of shots together and a lot of scenes together. Did you feel like when you first started rolling with him, you were like, oh, this is going to be good. I don't have to do anything. Yeah. I just have to be in the moment with this motherfucker. He's so good. Exactly. He, really, he impressed me a lot too. Exactly that. And, and and I think it ended up being really invaluable that doing the journey to set together. Yeah. You know, we went out for dinner and mm. hung out and, and you know, and we we went on this crazy road trip together before we'd start work. So like there was already cool. a there was already a, a relationship there. And 
Axel, as a man, is an incredibly cool motherfucker. Like, very, very cool. <laughs> very Everything he does is very, very effortless. So, and it's hard not to be enamored by him. So, the, which then obviously lent itself for me being able to easily tap into this is a guy I will follow to the, to the end of the earth, you know? Because mm. I already was like, this, you know, Axel is a cool fucker. So, so the wolf's going to follow Bruno. <laughs> Yeah. I, have, I have one really spoilery question. The uh, the tank interiors, was that a set? No. no. They crammed you guys in a camera in the tank? Uh-huh. Yeah. Holy, Holy shit. Fuck. What? How'd they light it? Dude, we got in there and we were like, oh, that fucking movie Fury where like... I was Brad just thinking Pitt, that, yeah. Brad Pitt and Burnfall and all them others, they're like, hey, it's Robin like Lerman. bigger than most Manhattan Shine. apartments. <laughs> like, that is not... Because the they couldn't fit both of us and the camera. We mm. had to play those scenes to the lens. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, you know, and do offline. It, obviously, not an ideal way to work scene wise. To you know, you want to work with your scene partner. You don't want to look at the side of the camera. But what it gives you in terms of the yeah. authenticity and the claustrophobia and the noise and the heat and the cold and yeah. all of that. Yeah. Did you capture all the sound live? Was that all on set or did you have to give a little... The, the tank scenes we had to... Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. That's okay. yeah. yeah. It looked fucking cool. Yeah, it looked like cool. you fucking tank. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm not like that. When we were up on the mountain, the winds were getting up to like 40, 50 mile an hour some days. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the sound department had the, the toughest job on the whole set. Like, and that's saying I was something. thinking about that. <laughs> yeah. No mole skin in the world that'll stop that. They, no, became, no. they became meteorologists. They're like, the weather the wind, in three days. Was, the wind was so bad, it would take the Nazis' helmets off. Like, just yeah, really. Please. And they've Holy got shit. the chin straps on. Yeah. And the wind would wow. still take the helmets off. That would have been a fun shot, honestly. I was thinking wow. the whole time, oh, not the whole time, but I was thinking a lot about how much uh, smoke and stuff is moving through a lot of a lot of this coverage. And mm -hmm. I didn't know, one, I didn't know if there was a wind machine for when it wasn't windy, just to keep it consistent. And two, like, was there a mist or smoke or machine like there? There was no, there we so had, many we sequences. Had members, that, we had crew members literally putting their hands in the dirt and throwing sand and grit in our face. Yeah, just old school. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How long did your makeup take every day? That was that was great. Um, they're a great crew. That makeup crew. Yeah, that was yeah. really do, really good. I think they do a lot of like horror horror genre stuff in the Nordics. That crew because they're so mm. good. Like, or like you know, I've been doing this a fairly long time. I've had like scar, you know, like scars and stuff done before. These they were turning it around so quickly. Yeah, that, I was going to say, that one that you ended up with at the end, how long did that take? The, the breakdown at the end of the day took longer than putting it on, like getting all wow. the dirt, grime, and the sand off of you. This leads me to a, this leads you to a question from our audience here. Uh, so I figured I'd ask this. Here we go. It says, love this so much. Question for Jack. What did they use his body double for? We noticed he had a stunt That's double. That's my question. And I saw that in the credits. We noticed he had a stunt double and also body double. Was there nudity <laughs> they cut? Emoji. Awesome <laughs> fucking movie. This is a question from a guest who shall not be named yet. What um, do you think? I think body, I know double, <laughs> body double because I don't do wides. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know why I had a body double. I wondered if it was because of any pickups that happened after you left or if there was a sex scene, like a terrible further no. rape scene that maybe you, yeah. No, it, it was for, yeah, it was for the pickups. And obviously I was 5,000 miles away. So yeah. So it was a, feeling, it was a yeah. member of the crew with dirty hands already. Those and like, then, oh, and then I had a stunt double for, and I did a lot of it myself, but um, I had a stunt double for the fight on the tank. What is the uh, film sure. union yeah, like yeah. in Finland? <laughs> What's that? What is the film union like in Finland? Are they saying they're like, oh, fuck, we need somebody you? <laughs> Non-existent. <laughs> when I saw you guys rolling in on those tanks, I was like, nobody signed a form for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they... Some man they set on fire. They set him on fire so many times that day. There is no way you could get away with that, like on a set in the US or in the UK. So no, you, you're almost anywhere, so yeah. I, I had that gig once. 
<laughs> I was the guy who lit the guy on fire. Really? It's, yeah, it's very therapeutic. I, I, I had the, I had some therapeutic. Way. Dave, you said yeah. I had the gig once, and then you said I was the guy who lit the guy on fire. Yeah. <laughs> a very different day from the dude getting fucking lit on fire. That's fucking hilarious. Um, wait, okay, follow really quick. Um, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you, Dave. Me, Dave. Yeah, um, you, Dave. Weapons training. I, I believed every second what you knew exactly what you're doing with your weapon. You use multiple weapons. You use the you were the gunner on the tank. You also had your own gun. I will also say, you know, back to what you're well, saying. Well, he does before. live in Concord, North Carolina now. So well, now you do. I don't know if in <laughs> London they have um, tank gun shooting ranges in you know where you grew up in in you know north of London, right? Um, what, did you did you do any on set? Did you just have to have this ahead of time? The accent, all this stuff. Did you just have to come in prepared? There's there's no gunfire. That was all post. None of those guns were working. But you look, you looked like, like you knew how to yeah. use it, though, so you had to have done some kind of research on, on um, this weapons not, work. Not really. Uh, not really. I've done some other things in the past. Hooligans. Yeah, was it your hooligan? Was that <laughs> the first time you really touched some shit? Um, was it the one in Argentina? Uh, the, this, this was not the first thing that he's done where he was handling weapons, yeah. basically. I feel like that's the... But the, the, the sniper rifle stuff... I watched, um, I went and rewatched, um, cause I love him. Shooter. No, I went and rewatched Saving Private Ryan. Cause I love oh, Barry Pepper oh, yeah. in that movie. He plays that like Southern sniper. Who, you know, Dude yeah. in the 25th hour. Oh, oh yeah. He's, he's so good in that. I love that performance. So I went back and watched that and like, just tried to have a look at, you know, like how he was holding it, what he was doing with it. And then I kind of used that as a touchstone for the, the sniper rifle relationship. That's tough having to like study the the action sequences in Saving Private Ryan for work. That's, that's <laughs> tough. It's a tough gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too bad. Too bad for this guy. Well, let's let's go through. Well, we're going to keep asking you questions as okay. we go, but let's talk about the movie. You guys, let's like, let's get back and kind of just like maybe go through mm. like kind of like we usually do. I just wanted to ask you guys about a few sequences and just the way they ended up telling this story. I think we opened by just talking about how how successfully on its face this story is. It is what it is, yeah. and I think that's just really where this thing lives. Um, the the myth building. Mm-hmm. I want to kind of talk, open up and talk about that. The myth building, the legend building of this man, the man who we haven't talked about like yet. A, who we haven't really talked? Yeah, he's yeah. the fucking that guy is so good dude that guy is uh also the pretty lead of this movie pretty light on the Go. imdb so i don't want to just keep turn it right back to jack about this but jack hopefully you can tell us where is he he has to be working right because his imdb is like a movie a year he, maybe uh, your yorma yorma yeah who is the sweetest nicest guy oh ever sure like, such a gentle soul um but he's I'm, i don't want to say because i don't know for certain but i think he does a lot of like experimental theater that in- sounds fucking awesome oh, we gotta go cool. to norway yes. man we gotta yeah. go dave yeah. we used to run sound willem for that defoe. kind of shit dave you gotta run sound for one of his shows we gotta see it <laughs> i'm in I, like love willem willem defoe I love that he said he's, he's like the sweetest guy he only killed three stuntmen it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <this movie. laughs> well i thought i thought i just he, thought that there was a- he's young or he's brother-in-law Look at that. Get the fuck out. Because he was in um, one day. All these and the guy who played Schutzer, the tank driver, is Yorma's son. Huh. And he was in big. He was the lead in Yorma's two other movies. Yeah, yeah he is. Rare yeah, I, I, looked at that. And, I was going to yeah. mention that. He's his son. Awesome. That's fucking yeah. great. Yeah, that was another cool thing about it. Was it felt like a traveling troupe. Like these guys yeah. all work together all the time. So, like, oh my you God. know, it was tough for me because. Uh, points because I'm up a mountain, I'm cold, I can't hear anything, and everyone's talking in a different language, and like I don't know, I didn't know what was going on most of the time. Because mm. like it made it made me realize how much information you pick up on a set just by osmosis, by just yeah. not eavesdropping, but just hearing what all the other departments are saying to each other. You know yeah. where you are and what's happening on and what's happening and what's gonna happen next. When that's taken yeah. away from you and everybody's just talking amongst themselves, it's hard to know where you are and where, you know, how ready do I need to be? You know, are we cool. are we two minutes away or are we twenty minutes away? <laughs> 
Nice. No, I can totally also, see that. Also, if it's like if it's like a group that already fits, you're not on you're not in on any of the in jokes either. No. So they have to explain what? the in jokes. To you. Don't tell me. Well, no. And I, I know I know we have to get back. John, John, sorry, I want to talk more about the movie. But the last thing I'll say too is that part of being the villain, and and, and I know this is a very this is an especially challenging role, especially when you bring the the, the female counterparts, of, you know, the people that you were dealing with in this movie, and that into the story, which we'll get to in a second. That gets challenging. But the, when it comes to just you versus Jorma, it's a hard J, right? Jorma. The more I bad. Soft. I mean, it's like it's Jorma. Jorma. Like, yeah. Oh, with the Y? Okay. Yeah. The more the more badass you are to Yorma, the better it makes him look. So that's probably a part of the fun of playing the belt, right? Where you're on that gun and you're trying to shoot him down and you can't hit him because he's such a badass. That probably, it's fun for both of you because it makes him look even cooler, right? Yeah. And then, and then the, like, the pressure that came on the day with the fight on the moving tank, like, you know, oh, yeah. I've watched, that was my last day on the moving. Um and like, yeah, when I do that just for rev- safety, if you're fun, actually yeah. up on the tank, it's like, let's do that in the last day, just in case. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just as he gets run over and dies. Yeah. Uh, but when I first got the script and the shooting schedule at the same time, like once I had both of those things, I looked and the last two weeks were in a soundstage in Helsinki. So and I'm reading the scripts and I'm going, oh, well, a fight on a moving tank. That's That'll be nice. That'll be green screen. It'll be air conditioned and... The tank will be simple. <laughs> I'll be able to say nope. there'll be a harness and it'll all be lovely and safe. Nope. nope. I think Game of Thrones thing now. Uh, uh. <laughs> Fuck we've, yes, dude. We found a disused World War II airfield and we drove the tank up and down the, the runway at 40 mile an hour with me and Yorma on the, back, on the top of the tank. Just one tiny like loop and a bit of ribbon tied to the tank to keep <laughs> us on it. And, and then they had two, they had two cranes mounted on Mercedes SUVs, and were and were covering us both awesome. sides. Yeah, they I hope Mercedes that. gave great. me some. Yeah, so that that <laughs> that's the uh, this problem. I think that's the thing I'm most proud of. On the is not dying. Yeah, uh, <laughs> technically but like doing that fight right. on a moving tank. Yeah. Spiritually, you And you know, and I'd watch Yuma literally go through hell for five weeks standing naked in fjords where the you know the water is like yeah. 30 oh my God. Fahrenheit, Wim Hof people Wim Hof I watched him do all of that and I was like do not let this man down by not being good like in this yeah. fight scene That's awesome. when, we, when we did that scene and he was he was bathing like, and I was like oh Jesus so like yeah. it made me shiver in the theatre yeah. Did you at the so rap, at the rap party though when it all wrapped up? Did you kind of like brush up to someone and go, "So, what happened to that studio in Helsinki?" <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I should have looked closer. That was for all the stuff in the airplane. Ah, yeah, it must have been. Yeah, I figured the interior. <laughs> but I like Axel, you said that about Yorma. Well, Axel was the one who got the most hurt on the shoot. He got a really, really bad gash on his forehead, like deep and like needed stitches, and that was. In the in the sound stage, yeah, in the sound stage, the fight scene, in the <laughs> safest course. place we have. <laughs> yeah, the he, he, kept, have. he kept going though, didn't he? After that, he after he got the stitches, he yeah. kept going. Yeah, they they took him to hospital and he went straight back. They stitched him up, makeup crew put a thing over it, and he went back to work. <laughs> He's probably thinking yeah, the same thing. It's great. like I'm not letting that guy down. <laughs> yeah, you can't be. In that. I like that you brought that up because yeah. I feel like that's something uh, people maybe outside don't necessarily know or dig but if you're an actor and even if you're not a lot of times like the lead the lead player in a theatrical or a film or tv production will really set a tone um the way that they behave and how seriously or not seriously they take the work and their their respect levels with Mm -hmm. whoever it really sets a tone so it's i fucking love when i hear especially now that you just gave us that inside baseball on He's like an avant-garde theater actor <laughs> who just comes and does this kind of stuff yeah. every now and then if the situation's right. And he took it 100% seriously with kindness and respect. And it made somebody like you, a total outsider, just be like, oh, we're going to do this as fucking serious as we possibly can. All mm-hmm. right. I'm on. I'm ready. Yeah. I love that. If you, if you go to one of his shows in Norway, one of his experimental theater shows, you have to... Finland, sorry, 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 my fault. Finland, you have to bring us. You can pay for us again. That would be very nice of you on the company card. And 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 we'll go. We got to see. We got to. We got to get the band together. We got to get the team back together. It's oh my god. All these sequels are being made elsewhere. I want to go see a fucking weird ass show uh, play and fucking. With, oh my god. Let's, all right, let's, uh, let's, 
Let's hire him a black box room. Get him to MoMA. Are you not MoMA? Sorry, get him to La Mama. Are you Dave, saying, they wrote your is thing. Is he available? Is he available? Oh, don't worry. I know a more experimental theater. There's oh, there's one above the producers club. <laughs> I'm gonna cast John. him in my 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 student thesis. John, get us back. Right, get, get us back, back to, into the story. Yeah, let's get back to the movie and let's keep it on him for a second because half of it is the performance and half is the storytelling. I just want to ask, and then Jack, you know, feel free to chime in. Like you were there. I know you're. You know, of course, actors aren't watching each other act, so it's not that Jack Dolan was on st- set every time this man was in a scene by himself. But maybe you could feel free to keep chiming on what it was like, maybe hearing about it or witnessing what you witnessed, and then seeing the final product. I want to talk about how successfully I think they pulled off introducing, they had a myth to build, they had a legend to build that they eventually literally get through with the help of Jack's, I got off the phone with the general and he's literally telling me about some specs about this guy, we're going to literally tell you a legend, we're going to hear another legend from the, uh, the same recounting from one of the female characters later in the film. But before that, before we actually hear them tell us exactly what we don't know yet, I thought they did an amazing job of seeing they had a they had a character who for me was so grounded in reality. This isn't a super heightened realism movie. And this character is introduced as though he is completely sincere in all of his behavior, in all of his pursuits. He just happens to be in a reality where he's left the war. We learned that from expository prescript in writing. He's left the war, he's looking for gold, and he's just trying to find something to get on, on his two feet again. We see him, yeah, he's in these cool slow motion shots and everything, but we see, for me, it was the shot when he finds the gold, where you realize how, how in, in a way, there is a vulnerability there. This is just a human who needs something. And then when they start layering on this mythology, which is where the movie really takes on this larger than life heightened realism quality, really this guy has never been killed before let's watch it play out but sometimes that can be silly and i think i just appreciated that they had a performer they had a character sometimes in america and i'm a fan of some of these movies we have some franchises some ip that have built up mythologies around certain characters but it's almost like uh there's a there's a cheese and a sentiment to it that i did not find here i felt like this was so grounded and he was so believable that when they started putting him in absurdly heightened living through that scenario, I was still rooting for him because it was almost like I just I just felt like I if I didn't root for him, there was no one else in the world that would because he was totally alone. And I just loved how they isolated him and grounded him. And well, I, mean, I don't know, did you guys was... in the first third of this movie, were you thinking yeah. about that? Were you feeling well, that? It, it also like it's it's kind of they sold it as a comedy over here, but. Once you get into the nitty gritty of it, it's like one of the one of the biggest rules is comedy doesn't hurt. And some of the injuries he sustained, you dealt with him dealing with those injuries, and that hurt. And I feel like this, that's what grounded him. The fact that he was feeling pain, he he was. It wasn't like the bullets were bouncing off him. He was getting shot. It was just sheer fucking determination that he kept going. And I think for me. Which- yeah, I know this gets a lot of comps. I've heard like, what if John Wick spoke less and was in World War Two, you know, in Finland or whatever. But um, I think it is helpful that a lot of us seeing this have seen Inglorious Bastards because there is this duality of um, this was fucking real. It really happened. It was really serious, and this is horseshit. But we every time we talk about this, we can't. We can't just let it be a funeral sequence. We can't. Like we have to. We have to find some hope. We have to find. We, we're not just choosing Nazis here because they're easy to root against. That we have to. We have to to have something to overcome. We have. We have to have more to this story so we can find comedy where we can get it, but also honoring that. Like to find that balance is the challenge, and it takes a low budget. Yes, this is a low budget movie, but also it's filmed like an epic that you could tell that the person who is making this movie doesn't think they're making a low budget independent movie. They think they're making an epic movie and that helped it be funny, which yes, made it easier to digest, but even more than that, it, it, it let it pack a little bit of a punch for us so that we could actually be rooting for something. Um, which I think is to your point. And with that, and Jack, to bring you into this, I just want to ask like kind of what we were speaking about earlier. It's a, maybe it's a director's job and then everybody else's job to get on board with. How do we all get inside the same movie? Tonally, mood, aesthetic, style, whatever, whatever words you kind of want to attribute to it. So did you feel like watching Yorma, watching Yalmarie, listening to them, the direction, everything. How did how did everyone kind of find their way into this film? 
Um, or do you feel like it, it was so smooth and organic that everybody kind of was there and it was just one of those magical I, flow kind of things? Yeah, I, I was trying to think of an answer that doesn't sound like stuff I've already said before, but I, there's such a, because we were so remote and we, you know, we were all living in log cabins, like, you know, we weren't like going back to a hotel. <laughs> Like, I had a fairly nice one. My one had a song in it. But, like, the, some of the crew were in, like, literal cabins, like, with no running water and no shower. And Jesus it's Christ. that thing you stop in for shelter smell. on a trail. Like, it, yeah. so it like, smells imagining. So it, we were also, you know, everyone's away from home. Everyone's away from their family. We're in ridiculously harsh conditions. You, you kind of just, it felt like you had no choice other than to, other than submit to, to the film, <laughs> yeah, and like and get through it together, and you know, and I, 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 I don't want to say it's like going to war because it isn't. It was just making a movie, but you know, you felt like oh, the good way to put it, I guess, is we all felt like we were on a mission together mm. to get this done. Yeah, and it really did breed a lot of camaraderie, um, you know. And there was on this like campground where we were all staying, there was like this traditional. Um, Hey, Joe. Car keys. This is my mom who's just popped into a... Oh, my God. Hey, <laughs> Joe. Hey, John. Hey, okay, Mom. Did you, did you mom? <laughs> oh, God, that's good. Um, I'm buzzing John. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. That's fucking great, dude. No, not so Jack. Fun. I'm not buzzing Jack, although you can drink. But... Yeah, you got to get the car keys. That's what there that is. Yeah, yeah. be part of the game. Um... There was this hut, like, a, and it's like a traditional Finnish style hut thing, with a hole in the middle of the roof. And like yeah, a sweat lodge kind of. No, more like they do drugs in there, kind of shit, like, or like a place to hang out and cook, <laughs> and and like there would be wow. a reindeer skin that you'd sit on, and there'd be a fire in the middle. And so Yamari called yes, it the wall. Yes, John, you can do drugs in there. It's like, <laughs> thank you. That's all I really was like. Don't tell me. <laughs> Wait, I can do drugs in there, right? <laughs> um, and uh, Yamari, we're all fantasizing being at this fucking rocket. Okay. God, we gotta go. <laughs> you can do drugs and nobody would know. The police are a million miles away. <laughs> Cell service is terrible. Also, drug dealers are a million miles away. Um, <laughs> bring your own, there's bring Jack's your own. buzz. Jack finally got his buzz. He's bummed that there's no tr- truck dealers nearby. Um, <laughs> finally, away from the kids. And you can't... John! <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Finish, finish your fucking. Yeah. Uh, Yamri called it the war room. And we, you know, we would all meet on a Friday evening after the week had finished. And they would like put some salmon and some reindeer on an open fire. and you know, and we'd all sit around and drink whiskey and they'd be playing and caught salmon I bet <laughs> so like yeah. you know, ma- the, the making of the movie felt like a movie in itself so like, I want to see it yeah that's, did, that's did they also, kind of what I wanted to get did they to, also take yeah. anyone who took over six takes in minus 25 degrees back there and beat the shit out of them at the end of the day yeah come on there's got to be a big board yeah, like, the young doesn't do more than six takes of anything <laughs> uh, it I, felt like that that's what I, one thing I, I love so much six, about it because the, 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 the Yamari ended up having to throw the leg himself to like. <laughs> oh, that's right. awesome. That is <laughs> awesome. Because the winds were like 45 mile an hour. Like, we were yeah. throwing the leg up in the air and it was like. So safety, safety goggles then. It's like, which way do we need back. the leg to go? It's like, well, the leg's going that way today. <laughs> the well, how do we get the blood? It's like the wind will do all of that. Just yeah. fucking throw it. They, they used so much blood on that job. <laughs> it was so. Like, I thought the boys was wild, like, with the amount of blood. Yeah, the hero gasm episode where you now got fucking. I'm imagining, dist- I'm imagining the war room hut. They're like reindeer, like neck slit, like every night before shoot, just draining reindeer for tomorrow's. Yeah. All blood. of the carcasses of the food you <laughs> ate during the shoot, just hanging up. None of everybody. this goes to waste. <laughs> All of this is good. I was vegan before I went to Finland. <laughs> Delicious reindeer. <laughs> that needs to be stuff. a bumper sticker. Oh, so yeah, Finland broke my veganism. <laughs> Hey, that's Jack a- sent me a video. Jack sent me a video of them uh, in, driving to set one day, and there's it's beautiful and and there's reindeer just running b- b- along the car b- with the car on the side of the road. It's fucking that, that was like one of my, or whatever. The- that was one of mine and Axel's drives through 
up to that's Norway. That's fucking beautiful. Um, that's fucking beautiful. We re- we rented a car and the production came to us and they went, but you're not going to Norway, right? Because you don't, you won't have insurance. And we were like, no, 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 we're not going. We're not going. No, we would never go to Norway. No, yeah. no. Yeah, immediately across the border. <laughs> Norway. <laughs> it was like, they know me there. What's in Norway? <laughs> it was so cool because we were, we were listening to Bon Iver, me and Axel both. Oh, fuck loved. yeah. And it was, uh, I can't remember which track. It was, Which one? Come on. It was, it was Holocene. Oh, like, yeah. It was Holocene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, we cranked it up, and then the like, <laughs> he reindeer just ran past as the tune. Damn was- it. Gender. I feel like you need to like send that. Where clip are the drug to, dealers? Uh, Come on, <laughs> this is like. <laughs> yeah, no drugs. People required, all over the world do yeah. drugs to to experience that without having to actually go there to do it. I'm kidding. Luckily, we got luckily, what they rented. Uh, what they rented was the tank, and he's up there with the gun, just getting dinner for the week. It's like. <laughs> so back back to the movie. I want to I want to shout out and Jeff and Dave hop in here and just just. I just, I can't get over, and I know that, again, like I said at the very beginning, they're not marketing it this way, which I understand that you shouldn't do that, but for for people who like movies, this is just so shamelessly independent. It was just, it was my favorite thing about it. The way that they so cleanly set up, you know, we talk all the time in dramaturgy and screenwriting and structuring, oh, how do you, you, what's the job? What do you actually do? This just whittled it down to the basics so much. We have a protagonist and it's it's almost literally separated by the chapters, so we can kind of talk about that too. But we have our protagonist, Gold, right? This is our first this is our first chapter, I believe, where this yeah. man we learn just enough about him to get on board with what he wants and what he needs. And then what do we do immediately afterwards? Nazis. We introduce his obstacle. We introduce mm-hmm. and and we and then immediately when we introduce the obstacle, there's the inciting incident that introduces what these two people, two forces are going to be pushing against for the rest of the movie. And that's it. That is this movie. There yeah. is, there is in, in the most successful way possible, there was really no more, no less. We don't mm. introduce, we hear very briefly about, um, God, he, he, he has a name, but the, the main protagonist that played by Yorma, Atomy, I don't think they ever say his Atomy. name. You say his name maybe what's, once. What's in the that, Russian in that. word they called him? Koshai. So, Koshai. Koshai, thank you. We hear at some point that he did lose his family f- from the Russian conflicts. Like, so uh, we, we did hear that maybe that includes, but we never see a flashback. We never yeah. go into his past. They never try to murk it up. The Nazis, now, good on y'all, Marie, for using Nazis because nobody ever needs to feel like they need to layer the, the character elements <laughs> of Nazis. They're Nazis. But uh, it, just for the sake of the structure and how clean it is, we keep it very, I love that he gave... Axel, that scene was so important for me where he he's talking to you and he's like, we're, we're fucking losing the war. Yeah. We need this goal. Yeah. We're like, going to be fucking we're, hungry. Yeah, we're we're fucked at the end. So this is our only I way out. Yeah. It wasn't just Nazis saying, it wasn't just mustache twirling Nazis that it could have been. Mm. That would have been enough for some people to just say, oh, they're bad people. Of course, they just want to terrorize this man, scorched earth, take everything they can. But Axel had purpose and you got on board with it. Your character got on board with it. So it made it, it made Nazis personal. I know that's super <laughs> fucked up, but it kind of took the uniform away from you for a second. And I saw, I started watching about pe- I started watching a movie about people lost in the wilderness and they had nothing but their desire, nothing but what they needed. And that's when this movie, I feel like really took off for me. It wasn't just the action and just the violence, which is fucking great. It wasn't just the storytelling which was, you know, really clean. It started to be about like, how do we, how do we tear down these men in the middle of fucking nowhere? And we just have nature versus nature, the human nature versus the elements. And I just got, it just, it started giving me tones of that movie, the gray, uh, the Liam Neeson film. It's just those wonderful movies where people are out in the elements and suddenly a fucking, um, Oh shit. What's the movie with the river with the, the male, (laughs) the male, uh, Ding, 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 ding. Oh, God damn it. What's the... What, John Voight? Yeah, no, Deliverance. I, I, Deliverance. Deliverance. Yeah. Deliverance but... um, and I just feel like that's when this movie started taking on a, a sophistication, if you will. Uh, put the genre aside for a second. Put the violence and the blood aside. Put the way that they're marketing aside. I started sensing something more sophisticated in the storytelling when that started happening. It felt almost Brechtian to me. It was so fucking exposed and it was so aware of itself that I don't know. Were you guys sensing any of this? Like I also was just having a great time, but just looking back on it, like I felt like it, there's something so deep in the minimalism. 
I'm going to buzz just, you for really using a word you learned at school. <laughs> Which one? I just said a lot of, a lot of uh, some scores. <laughs> it, he uses flashcards every night to remember them all. <laughs> no, I, I, Guys, I agree. This, this, what you, no, what'd you this think? Was, like, what, it wasn't just a fun time, right? Like, why no, is the, uh, this? Was, can't this just was, be fun and have a great yeah, movie. This was filled in perfectly. Like everything that every piece of information they needed to communicate was communicated in a very unique way that a lot of audiences, in, especially in this country, wouldn't see normally. Um, because For depend, sure. yeah, depending on you know what country you're dealing with, they tell stories in different ways. And this was a very, I want to say abrupt and concise way of telling the story well, it and it is, works beautifully of it is because because you, you, english isn't yamari's first language and i mean he speaks great english but it's not his first language hmm. <clears throat> so and he wrote you know he wrote sisu as well and so he he can't rely on the lazy the laziness of it, of just verbal exposition because it's harder for him to write English dialogue than it yeah. is. Hmm. So it, actually what it does is it gives him a very a very good grasp of show, don't tell. So like yeah. he shows he shows you, you know, like there's some moments right at the beginning that I love because what he's doing is is exposition, but he's using images, mm-hmm. which is just makes it cleaner and more beautiful. And you yeah. know, like Artemy just running running his finger over his wedding band and Okay, yep. this guy. That was all we needed. His wife's nowhere to be seen. So you're like, oh, so this guy has either lost his wife. There's, there's some trauma there. Then he takes his yeah. shirt off. And you see all the scars. So yeah, the scars. You know, perfect. this guy means business, but you don't have to be told. You know, I know we tell the legend later, but yeah, you already know this exactly. guy is is someone and the dog tags and the guy. And it's just a it's a beautiful, almost exercise in that adage of. Shot, don't tell. That's what if I was. Yeah, I was actually yeah, disappointed kind of, yeah. when people started talking. Like uh, it was, it was working so well for me. <laughs> there was a minute for me where I was like, "Is this going to be a silent film?" Uh, Fuck yeah! Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it's, yeah it's still great. At one point, there was one cut where no one spoke for twenty-eight minutes, uh-huh. and I'm pretty sure he was like, "That was too much." Too much. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think I found the limit. Like, I think it's like seventeen minutes or something. If you, as long as you don't count the the you know, the, the preamble before you see him. Yeah. Right. yeah I think right. that's right, 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 right. we see an actual character speak in the movie. I also loved that shot and Dave chime in here if you want. Um, this is a, another wonderful example of with the minimalism of the storytelling, it lined up with the minimalism of a low budget film. How do we take advantage of CGI and show that war is happening? We put fl- planes flying overhead way in the clouds so we don't have to make them too defined. And we do it with sound. And we have him <laughs> walk up to the edge of an incredible natural vista. And we put we put explosions in the distance behind the clouds. And we let yeah. sound and gentle visual effects do the work for us. We don't I can't imagine how much that shot costs. They, they I bet they spent they all their money as on well. that shot of the burning city. Yeah, Banshee's... And, uh, and the shot seven. around his face was like a 360, right? Didn't yeah, the, go around the burning him? city. What, what what town did you guys burn down? <laughs> we, just, <laughs> we had a party. It was the night of the rap. <laughs> was, Kill! Go up on the... <laughs> I think the town that's on fire is supposed to be Robert Niemi, which is, which is weirdly now is the biggest tourist destination in mm. Finland. Like, that's where people go. Yeah, that was a beautiful East. composite shot. But where did uh, you actually do it? Oh, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I bet it was, that's what I'm saying. I bet it wasn't real. I bet that was one of the only uh, like they, truly they, visual element shots. They sent me a um, uh, a video that was part of the EPK, the electronic press kit, that was a, like a short, and it was about 10 minutes just on the, just about the visual effects team. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll see if I can dig it out on, on my emails and I'll send it to you. Yeah, um, so many of those explosions were practical, right? I'm allowed to do that. Yeah, the explosions were practical, right? A lot, a lot of the ones we got to watch were yes. maybe sweetened with some uh, visual effects, but gunfire wasn't. Gunfire was post. Most explosions, the mines, um, me shooting him, me shooting him with the big machine gun across. He's running up the hill. That was practical. Um, explosions that was <laughs> God, that's it's, good 
Um, so like dirt blasts. The, the biggest one. Yeah. The biggest one they did was the the plane. And yeah, they, the plane crash. They did that in a swamp. And they used something like two hundred kilos of TNT or something. It looked like it. <laughs> oh that's what I'm talking about, folks. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Independent filmmaking. It looks like they had like two or three cameras set up, and they were like. Everybody ready? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, this, no, like, this is fucking it. Dude. It's like fucking Tropic Thunder where he sets it off at the wrong time. <laughs> Danny, Danny McBride. That's so funny. That's so good. Uh, let's talk about, let's talk about, and guys, tell me if you agree. One thing I really enjoyed, and again, not an American film, and I think this is plays to the strength because of, uh, because of that fact, the pace never allowed itself to get eaten by the momentum of the of the actions that were happening. I felt like it stayed grounded in the pace that it set up from the beginning. It, again, this has like Tarantino-y kind of elements, but it never started collapsing onto itself and picking yeah. up and becoming super I'm momentous. Like, no, and the, I enjoyed the pace, that a lot. The pace fit the action. Well, for and sure. so that too, yeah. and and it's again, I'm gonna keep saying it, it's still my biggest, my biggest like surprise, but not shock. Is Jack not knowing this was a comedy? It, and and I know it's a Nazi movie, so like it's it's sort of a catch twenty two. Even like it's not going to be a pure comedy, of course. But it's if you were to speed it up, it would become reckless. And so you have to accept if if it was a pure historical drama, you have to know that audiences would question things like him being underwater for ten minutes. And um and I've done the Wim Hof thing, and he you know with the breath holds and stuff. And I imagine you had to do that to get you know through this shoot. Um, but then later with the hanging, and he's like in a cut. Yeah, and it's uh, like, you've done that? Not underwater. <laughs> not underwater. That? I've just uh, above water. I've gotten like three minutes, three and a half minutes. I've gotten say, the breath you, holds. You've sucked the air out of someone else's lungs. No, okay. Uh, this might okay. Hold it's on. the longest Jeff has ever gone yeah. without talking. By the way, listener, three, <laughs> three okay. minutes and how many seconds is that? No, fuck. Keep I buzz you all. Fuck everybody. Jesus. Fuck everybody, Jack. Um, but I, well, actually, speaking of the water sequence, I love how Jack. We, we need to remind ourselves that he's a sharpshooter, even though he keeps missing our main character. So I love that Jack's a sharpshooter when it's his own guy. It's just boom, one shot. But this other guy just fucking all over the place. Da, 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 da. But <laughs> it's like just sort of just so you know he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. Um, I'm getting in the leg. <laughs> you guess. I say yeah. But so, so yeah. back to back to John before. Yes, this was a comedy, and yeah, we were rooting for him. But and it fucking hurt. I mean, it, it's hard to. He was. I mean, he was brutalized to the point where it was a comedy, but it was like, get us back, dude. Like, I know at the end I'm going to go, yes, but like they really tested us. And I appreciate, so to finish to answer this question, I appreciated that they didn't rush it because they, if if they really cared about, are people going to believe us? Is this, you know, is it, are they going to think this is exactly how it happened? That kind of bullshit. They probably would have picked up the pace so that we people, he wouldn't be underwater for 10 minutes. But at the same time, I'm glad they just trusted it. They knew their tone. They knew that they could rely on the, at least the comedic elements to the point where the audience could be like, I know this has, if not a happy ending, I know it's going to have a satisfying ending in some way, shape or form. So that it was able to get us to those points. Even the guy survived a hanging overnight. You know what I mean? Like, and, and, and honestly, like that was fine. Dude, that, not, that, not for that one second. Rebar in the, uh, in the side, the girl in the seat behind me was me. fucking squirming. That was me. Uh, I was sitting there and I was like, just stand off, oh, fucking stand on it. Oh, like, like, oh my God, man. Oh, and squirming. then what happened? Yeah. What, what, let's all, let's all weigh in. Did he just, did he go to sleep after that? Did he yeah. black out? Get like, a couple what, sleeps. What Get a couple <laughs> sleeps in there. That was like, stay no, Oh, I'm good. It's holding me up. I can breathe. I'll take a nap. How do you think his character, Atomy, would have? Would have uh, how do you think he would fit into our 21st century, new new age sensitive? How he'd do be doing show. He'd function? be doing shows at La Mama. That's what he'd be doing. He'd be out there fucking doing the experiments and shit. Oh, there's a dog. Well, I mean, he gave he gave uh, yeah, women sorry. guns. He's obviously woke. We haven't talked enough about the women. That was true. that was fucking cool because we knew that they were going to play a bigger part of the story, but they really kept them at bay. I, they didn't, they didn't do to... the Mad Max thing where they told us yeah. the whole movie, just so you know, they're going to come up later. And then when they got their comeuppance, it was like, holy I, shit. I have to say, Jack, when, when your comeuppance came in my theater, it got cheers. Yeah. <laughs> when, when they thought they were going to leave you, like he was going to leave you, and then the girls just came walking out and yeah. cheers in my, in my theater. Oh, man. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. I do, I do want... I do, I do want to put this question out there and Jack, feel free to answer it. 
I really thought those ladies were going to surround you, and I was going to see you, Hitler, at, at the end of Inglorious Bastard style, just a thousand squibs going off of them just fucking filling you up with lead. Why didn't they kill you? What, what do you think the... What do you think the logic was behind why they wanted to bring you back with them for a prisoner of war, just to prove that they were... Prove they got the tank. I, I, I have, thought prove they got the tank from them. I have a sequel clause put in all of my independent movie contracts. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, honestly, <laughs> honestly. Do your movie, but I want to do the next one too. Um, sure, sure. I, I don't know. I, don't, I, <laughs> I know we're sitting and discussing the movie, but... Uh, sorry. New delivery. Oh, we just got. Oh my God! Did Carlos Baroto just give you a beer in North no, Carolina? AKA John's mom. Hey, so Ray Shot. AKA John's oh dad. <laughs> oh my God. John's whole family is in, in this podcast. <laughs> my whole fucking family is in my extended family. My immediate. Family. Can we get Ray Shot's face in this frame or what? He's like, Dad, you gotta at least get in it if you're gonna get in it. Yeah, yeah there, he there he is. People oh, get on YouTube. <laughs> there he the is. Golf legend. Hey, Dad. Hey, hey. What's up? I broke your microwave once. Remember me? Yeah, say that again. I yes, broke your man. microwave once. Remember? I already, I already said you owe me a microwave, Alvin. Ah, you yeah. <laughs> that part didn't you? Oh, we, we we've take... already been talking. Jesus Jack, Jack pays for me now. So. Oh, there you go. There you go. Right, good to see you. Bye. Good to see you, Rashad. Right, see ya. That's how we treat our guests. Oh, yeah, on this yeah. Show. Okay, yeah. I even thought. I even thought maybe. I'm not gonna lie, Jack. I love you. You're 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 a family member. Yeah. How do we kill him? I was like, if they don't fucking kill him, I was disappointed they didn't fucking kill you. But I was like, oh, you didn't why like. Why isn't he fucking naked hanging on that tank? <laughs> oh, why, it's fine. Like, how do we how do we humiliate him? I, mean, I thought I, I thought what it. I was under the impression when I read it. I was under the impression that when I'm hogtied up on the barrel, I thought uh, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna be all like mutilated and dead and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but you know, it was a choice they made, and I didn't question it because I think they, yeah, it's, it's a POW thing. Honestly, that. prisoners of war. Yeah, that you yeah, want to, you want to, you want to question him, like all this stuff. And also, how badass is it? The women come in, and they're like, oh, I think it was and also it's like, do you have any questions about us that, being able to kill Nazis? We tied one up and put it on the gun. That's what I think it was. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was a more fun statement because if they, if they had come back without you, it would have been we escaped. Yeah, exactly. Whereas when we brought when we come back with you. We fucking took, we literally took prisoners and left no, you know, nobody else. So I think and can we say, Mim that was fucking beautiful. Mim Mim Mimosa Willamo, I believe is her name. Um, pretty new to, to me. I, I had never seen her in anything before, but she, works, she works pretty solidly in the Nordics. She's uh, fucking awesome. In yeah. Movie, yeah. She's, Very good. She, she's a talent. She is a talent. Hmm. Um, yeah. I believed, I believed every, every breath she took. Yeah. We got to hang out a fair bit when we all went up to Toronto for the festival. She's really, really cool. Really, really cool. I've got, I've got. A How did you guys? I've got a feeling we'll be on other stuff like very soon. Yeah, nice. I mean, I hope this changes a lot of your lives. You, you included. Mm. I mean, this is super successful. Last movie question I wanted to just put out there because I thought it was so much fun. I loved him walking back into what city is that supposed to be? The final city, Helsinki. Helsinki. Yeah, sure. So he comes back into the capital. Dumps his gold. I loved, I loved how the scattering of the roaches, the bank, the people and the civilians, the yeah. bankers getting out of the way. Gringotts there. How did too. how did your audience how did your audiences react to um, him speaking? I heard a bunch of people. A lot of people like laughed in my theater, uh, but I think I think more people. I think even more people laughed at just the reaction of the teller that that woman when he pours all that and just the way. He, I mean, he just looks like. <laughs> the absurdity of that last scene. I just thought, I thought the whole thing worked really well and everybody had a great time. I thought it was a good ending. Did your theaters know. like it? I, I think, uh, yeah, oh yeah my God. Our, our theater, uh, my theater liked it. I think I would have preferred like a Willy's Wonderland type, type of thing where he just said nothing the whole film. I was thinking about that. I'm sure they thought a lot about it though. That, yeah. my, I left the theater thinking, I kind of wish he said nothing, but at the same time, I bet you they thought. I mean, what he did say was months. fucking gold, but I didn't yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's got to be, but I know what you mean. There's got to be a cut where they were like, let's just cut before he says the line and let's see how it plays. For some reason, they chose not to. Yeah. Jack, final things I wanted, because we are, I know we're going long here. We are going long. I just wanted to I hear have another, about I have the another reception. question, too, from the fans. I just got a fresh right, just, this, Good, good, good. The reception in Toronto 
I just, just, I, you don't have to tell us that every what fucking did it feel detail. Like I know we this but movie. Seriously. You're talking to me about what that was like, dude. Like this had such a fucking fantastic reception. And that's the kind of thing that I think a lot of people don't quite understand. How does a movie who nobody's seen yet already have hype around it? So like, just talk a little bit about what that was like going to that red carpet for uh, Toronto, the premiere. And they being like, yes, this comes show. out in nine months. <laughs> it, it, it premiered at the, at the midnight show in the midnight, the, the bit within Toronto that's called Midnight Madness, which still caters more to genre stuff. And mm. Rare Exports played there 10 years ago and was uh, a huge, excellent. huge hit. So I'm pretty sure that the program, um, the programmers at Toronto, you know, keep up with Yamari and uh, they're always like, hey, whatever you've got a movie, you know, make sure we get it. Um, so I think like within that crowd, that was how word spread. Cause we were in the, we were in like, um, the, are you still there? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. We've still, we've still got you. You're we still I just got you. a low battery. Ah. Um, uh, we, if we lose you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep talking until we die, until you die. So, yeah, we were in the Princess Alexandria, which is like this beautiful Victorian theater. It's got the red velvet, and, um, and it was packed, like full crowd at midnight. And what was really, really cool, and this was Yalmarie's doing, was he flew the composer over, and the composer was stood on stage with an electric guitar playing the score as everyone came in to watch the movie. Oh. And they just set the oh, that's good. Like, so beautifully. That's good. Because everyone's listening to this like dark, moody yeah. stuff. And then I love that stuff. You know, that midnight man is that's they're good. wild. Like, you know, I've never heard cheers and and stuff like it. So yeah, it was great. Really, really cool. And then this led to uh, a bidding war between a few different companies that were going for it. Because Je- Jeff, you made that joke, but when they go into that premiere, they don't. There is no release date, right? You know, mm-hmm. no one, no one had started purchasing or bidding or anything yeah. yet. So it's just so unique. Well, I'm just. This is great, dude. This is like right. this does not happen very often, folks. This is not. Um, because we, we, we kind of just touched on it, but just to be super clear, this is not Bong Joon Ho's Parasite winning the Palm Door at Cannes. No. And then obviously rolling into theaters internationally. And people who were surprised that that did so well, there's a little bit, I was always like, why are you so surprised? That's like one of the number one film festivals. <laughs> like it's not, it's not that shocking. This, I think this kind of movie breaking out and then getting a wide release in the West. I think that is just, I think it's really remarkable and nobody is disliking this yet on a major scale. I feel like everybody is having yeah. fun. There's very few critics have, who have had the nerve to say something de- negative, and it's True. none of it's really that uh, that bad, fruitful. The couple bad reviews I've seen, I, I just, shit, right? I feel like, what were you, what yeah. were you expecting? They saw yeah. this with losers. Yeah, it is, we did what we said on the tin, like yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, you know. So well, I mean, that's, that's, that's one of the things we trailer. hate about reviewers. They go, they go to, after you know their day of work or whatever. They might have had a shit day. They could have got dumped or that week. Anything could happen, and in... they see it and they write a review based on the what they're feeling. Maybe so, some saw it in Toronto, but it sounds like some saw it with a bunch of other critics. You know, they sound sure. like you know because yeah. yeah, we, we, there... we had about fifteen reviews come out of after Toronto. Um, so yeah, about, about 15 after Toronto and then all of the others have come since yeah. this week. Honest, but it's, the reviews are generally high. Yeah. It's certified fresh and the audience score is very, very high. The last question we have from yeah, our guests question. here is Jack, what is your personal, cause we haven't, we didn't do like a favorite kills in the movie, which we might've done otherwise. Somebody wants to know what is your favorite kill in the movie? I don't know if they specified whether it's one that you did or not. Again, yours would be limited to killing your own people. So that maybe isn't the answer, <laughs> but what is your favorite kill in the movie? And were there any other kills that got cut from the movie? Um, no, I, I know. one of you, one of you mentioned earlier, and then we never got to talk about it, about whether there was a lot on the cutting room floor. Dude, yeah. enough. Every every sentence of that script is in the movie. Like Good. what you yeah. see on screen is what was on the page. Good. And they had ninety minutes right on the dot. It's cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite uh, kill? Favorite kill is, and, it, and it, especially because of who it is. So there's one of the one of the truck drivers when we're, you know it's in the killer mall 
section. Um, <laughs> one of the truck drivers and the knife comes through and he looks one way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was, he was a really good friend of mine on, on the set. He's a real character, but he, he's actually one of the electricians. <laughs> yeah. They like, he, they like ran out to like to get us the fight. cigarette smoking was you know yeah, who, who hasn't wanted to do that to an electrician on set honestly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> guys what was your favorite kill what was your when he threw the landmine mm. all of a sudden a landmine <laughs> like a sound fucking on that too. pancake hit somebody <laughs> <laughs> I felt Dave, bad for the two uh, girls but you knew they were going to yeah, die yeah I mean he stole mine that was it was the same it was the landmine the, the landmine throw I, I laughed out loud Look. in the theater and clapped. My favorite one was <laughs> my favorite one was for sure too. Like they're, they're all so fucking fun, but they have to come out with a really cool one at the beginning. That was my favorite one. The knife through the, knife the head. head. Yeah, just just the turn around. <laughs> it's so the fast. look, the it's look so on fast. that guy's face. Like, oh my god, it was that so. Also, insane. shut him up. He didn't yell. <laughs> that is the live action equivalent of South Park doing "Shut your fucking face, Uncle Fucker" at the start of the movie. It's like <laughs> this is what you're in for. If yeah. you don't like it, yeah. leave now. <laughs> yes. That first sequence I thought was oh, yeah. so, so good. And like, just, all the execution of that. Yeah. The decision making is so Anyway, good. this was so much fun. Jack. But thanks for bearing with us, Jack, bearing with us, listeners. First time we've really done kind of like a little half interview, half review style. This was fun for us. I hope it was fun for everybody at home. It was fun for uh, you. Jack told Jack. us about this movie six months ago. We're so happy we finally get to talk about it. Yeah, this has been such a journey. Jack, when did you film that? Uh, Full of twenty one. Jesus Christ! Boom! There you go, folks. That even an independent, right? This is not like some major motion picture. Like you know, sometimes people think smaller movies take less time. Nope. Smaller quote, smaller, less. You know, this is you know a long time in the in the making. It premiered at Toronto this past year, this past winter. So, or last fall would it have been? Yeah, fall of twenty two. Yeah, to fall of twenty two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Anyway, congratulations. Fucking Jeff, cool. Jeff is pushing awesome. all sorts of buttons over there. Thank you, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. Jeff, are you, Jeff, was, are you gushing? I was about to gush just this all, but you're in the middle. Of, you're still talking. Sure, sure, sure. No, I mean, you might as well. if you. There you go. <laughs> just gush us all because we all had too much fun talking about Cheers, it. Cheers, boys. Last too drink of the, the proper show, and then we'll do our recommendations of the week. To Sisu, make sure you tell your friends to go see it. Yeah. Go fucking see it. I don't all know right, what button you right. push, but you have to turn that off because it's not showing up on mine. I got it. Well, <laughs> friends, we've now reached that part of the episode where we tell you what we've been watching in our segment, What You've Been Watching. We'll give you our recommendations of the week. We'd like to start with Dave, but we have a guest today, so why don't we go ahead and start with our guest unless we need some extra time this week, Jack, to think about what you've been so, seeing. So what, what, are we, what are we doing? Uh, Just- recommendations. <laughs> what you've been watching, other things you like that you want to yeah. shout out. Um, Anything you've been watching recently? I Paw Patrol season two. I've been watching a lot of Paw Patrol. Um, <laughs> Super Kitties. Super Kitties is big at the moment. Lion. Yeah. No, but um, I'm watching season two of Mayor of Kingstown on uh, Paramount. Wait, uh, is it out sh- already? Yeah. Yeah, it's out. Fucking I'm a dumb season. huge Jeremy Renner fan. Oh yeah. Um, and I like Sheridan's whole thing he does. Um, I waited on him one time. This, oh, really? Was he nice? Please tell me he was nice. He was very was nice. There that day. He was very nice. He had his whole family there. His whole family. <laughs> he, took, he took four smoke breaks and he ordered the footlong hot dog. <laughs> Stop. Um, That's exactly the, the answer I wanted. <laughs> and there's an actor in it who I, I, I'm sure he's been working for years, but it was the first time I've ever seen him. He's called Taylor Handley. He plays Jeremy Renner's little brother in it. And I just think he's really, really, really good. He does so much without doing a lot. So I'm going to shout out another fellow actor, Taylor Handley. There's my record. Nice. Love it. Cool. Fuck yeah. Dave? Dave. Uh, I tuned into a new show called Monsterland, which is uh, it's basically it deals with uh, monster. It's almost like monsters. Yeah, I want to say X Files, but um, land. but it's In not land. people trying to solve the thing. This like the first one I saw was very dramatic, mm. very intense, and yeah, you deserve that, and <laughs> very weird. So it's it might be with look. I've, I'm one episode in. It got me with the twist where they in, like they introduce the monster part of it into the the drama. Um, cause it's for, at first it was just a serial killer drama, and then it turned out it wasn't. It was a creature. So. Um, that, that's the first episode. I think it's going to be a good one. 
and also this week I happened to go to a screening at the uh, Dock and Roll Film Festival down at Nighthawk uh, in Brooklyn uh, of a film I worked on a couple of years ago. Uh, it was the Lee Fields documentary, Faithful Man. Cool, and, nice. Yeah, I hadn't, uh, I hadn't cool. seen it. Uh, I went and... to Birdman at, at the Nighthawk the first mm-hmm. time I ever went to New York. Yeah. And, and I walked in there and I was like, this is the coolest cinema I've ever <laughs> Right. Uh, it is sat, pretty cool. I, I felt like I was in a movie, about to go and see a movie. <laughs> and the movie they only yeah, play movies. Yeah. Yeah. They only play movies with the word man at the end of the title. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it was, it was great. Yeah. It was a great cinema. It was great to finally see that documentary because I haven't seen it since I worked on it like two years ago. Um, yeah. They've been working on it for 10 years. Um, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I do not have the patience, so respect. Um, and yeah, it was great. We all went down for an after party in the bar. I left some of our coasters laying around. Yes. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Love a cinema the coasters. coasters. Oh. Are you gonna mail me some? I gotta gotta put those yeah, things we'll, out we'll all, around, yeah. all around LA. Dave yeah, I, made that. I, I have the address. I did. So I did a fucking bar crawl of Brooklyn that night, and I left coasters everywhere. I'm about to go. <laughs> I'm going on a like a speakeasy tour at some point. I met a guy the other night, and yeah, we're def- kind of setting something up. So, dude, give me some yeah, coasters. Def- so I can just definitely leave, leave them in speakeasies. That, that is our target audience. Breweries. Yeah, send them to. What did you say, Jack? Send them some here, and I'll leave them out in the breweries. Do you mind? I think that I think that would be a good idea. Yeah, we should just like yeah. randomly leave these places. Yeah. I think I've got about thirty That's left. Fun. Dave, send them out. Let's go. That's fun. I have been watching. Uh, I've been uh, keeping up with with Saul. Still loving it. Better Call Saul. And I started watching inadvertently. Kind of sat down because Elizabeth was watching the very end. I think they just finished or you know released a recent later season of Working Moms. Nice. Uh, I think my sister really likes that show. Actually, Jack's Jack's wife um, and started it over. Boys is in it. Who? Christian, who plays my twin in the boys. She's in. She's in season. Awesome. One of the TNT twins. Yeah. Other than Jack. <laughs> it's good. This is a show by Catherine Reitman, who is the daughter of Ivan Reitman, younger sister nice. of Jason Reitman. Uh, you may know her from It's Always Sunny, but you know, really, I'm, I genuinely, I thought it was pretty fucking entertaining. I'm pretty impressed by that show. I'm having fun watching it. So, how about you, Jeff? I'm finally caught up on Succession, and God, it's been good, man. Rory Culkin, <laughs> everybody's shouting out Rory Culkin this season. Man, he's come to his own, man. It's so good. And I you like Ted... Kieran, right? What? You mean Kieran Culkin, right? Uh-huh. Buzz him. This for yeah, that Jack technically buzzed you on that motherfucker. Yeah, Jesus. He plays Roman Kieran R's. Fuck everybody. Okay, so yeah, it's Kieran Culkin is awesome on the. He's he's doing a really good. I love everybody. I love Tom. He already got his Emmy, so I put him off to the side. Give Kieran his co- his fucking. Let's go with the statues. I really like. They, this they just changed his category, so he's in. He's up for lead now. Oh Most. no, I don't know if he. I don't know. That's too bad. It's too bad. But I mean, it's good for him, I guess, in the Al Pacino wanted to be a lead in the Godfather sense, even though it was an automatic loss to Marlon Brando. But anyway, whatever. Um, good for him. He's doing great. I love Tom. He, he's I like his sound bites. Uh, you know, it's a good show. It's fantastic. And I really like the Matson character. I, I worked character. with um, Matthew McFadden, who plays Tom Wamscams when I and was like, 14. What? He, yeah, he used to be in a... He used to be in a show in England called Spooks that was all about MI5, all about the secret uh, secret service. Did you, are you caught up in succession? Uh, the last one I saw was when they were up in the Alps. That's it, yeah. So we haven't seen so I'm, I'm caught up. Yeah. Um, the, the Connor's wedding episode, the, Tom's sound bites are actually the ones that are like haunting me the most. For what it's worth. Shut anyway, the fuck up. No, what well, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fucking at Connor at shit. Connor's wedding, Tom is my right. favorite character. Fuck you. I haven't seen shit else. It's been a busy week. Go fuck yourselves. So Connor I'm has caught a up on Ted Shut the fuck up. You know I'm saying? caught up on yeah. Ted Lasso. Oh, no, mom and dad are fighting. I like the Sunflowers <laughs> episode better than the most recent Shut episode. Up, Dave. Get in your room, you little bastard. <laughs> fucking hate this family. Ted Lasso's taking a lot of swings. They're taking swings. I like the Sunflowers. It's taking a lot of swings. We'll see if they all land. Beard needs to just be beards. Hey. But I like it. Got, we got to wrap this up. People, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you again, Jack Doolin, for coming on this show and being our first guest of 
it, who was also in the movie that we're talking about. We really appreciate it. Thank you to the Sisu marketing team for not trusting us with this, but also not <laughs> listening ahead of time. And thank you all for listening. And we'll see you again soon, film fans. Thank you.